it is the start of another day and it does look like the price action is pushing higher. The divergence which we talked about did play out. The support structure which the price action was showing you did work out. Now everything happened in last one week. The price action now is breaking through a trend line, as you can see, for Bitcoin, which is giving you a clear indication that it is regaining 200-day moving average. So this becomes another bounce off from the 200-day moving average with significant volatility. And it's not only that, the market is taking this 60,000, 61,000. Price breaks above that, and the market attention is coming back. Welcome to the Scientific Investor Family, where the normal retail guys get to learn how to become the next top 10% of this world. Bitcoin broke back about $61,000, and it's already 10% up for the week. Ether is up close to 15% for the week. Binance Coin is up close to 15% for the week. Solana 16, XRP 28. So you now see the difference here. XRP is up 30% for the week, while all of the others are 10 and 15 in the macro scale. Now look at others who did somewhat similar movements. Cardano, 28%. XRP, 28%. So you are watching something. Bitcoin Cash, 24 Near, 27 There is a segment of asset in this asset class which is now attracting more capital. So you're watching them doing much better than the rest. Now, what's in common with all of these coins? One of the primary thing is that they didn't move while all of the others did. They also dropped with the market, but their drop was not below a huge level of support. They retained this level of support. Especially if you are looking at XRP and zooming into that, the price broke through the trend line, which is good, which is great, which is perfect. Now it is testing the next level, which is 0.6. The price needs to break through that range, but the trouble is the Bitcoin dominance is still there because Bitcoin is breaking through and most of the altcoins are not. That shows you the dominance is still shaky. The total altcoin market, however, is following the similar structure which we plotted at the bottom. Now, if you remember the idea being conveyed there, it still is valid. Last consolidative movement, there was like 240 days. And the upside was 150 days, which was after 240 days of consolidation. Now here we are, we had kind of 150 days of consolidation, most likely by the time we break this pattern. Which means, what are we looking at? Something below 100 days of a run up, maybe 75 days, maybe 80 days, but that's going to be something positive. What would the momentum look like is the focus. That's what we are interested in and that's what we want to know. Because the break to the upside will show you that at one point, the momentum is about to kick back in. Daily shows you Bitcoin is about the 21 day moving average. Three days shows you it's coming back to retest that. So that's 64,600. Price coming back up to retest that will show you there is massive interest in this asset. Then the next trend line, however, as a resistance, 
in Bitcoin would look somewhat like this. So the price needs to come back up to 68. If you are looking at the moving average and its direction, you already know one thing. The price sometimes move below the moving average, then go above. Be shaky, come back down, go above. While it's in a downtrend, it goes down and spend more time downside. When the trend shifts, it only spend a little bit time below that moving average, as you can see. So if you see price regaining 65,000, that means it's the same trend, just like late December 2022, just like September, October 2023, maybe it's July, August 2024, but each year we are watching, there is a few months of downtime for crypto market. This is Bitcoin. So as soon as Bitcoin break above that, you know, the momentum shift is, the momentum shift, the kind of attention which we used to get in last three months, that will be different. When the price was going down, people were asking more like, ah, it's going down, right? But when the price go above the moving average, retest that and bounce off, it's almost the same. Each and every time you break the moving average, retest it and bounce. But what we have seen in common is when you do break to the upside and come back to retest, all oh, people, they get offended. Oh, it's going back down. So keep that in mind, that's a bigger possibility that you will flood with the moving average. Now, the moving average here is 64,000. That's a three-day chart. On a weekly, it's 65. So consider 64 to 65 as a key range to break through on a macro scale for the next big upside and then come back down to test that level. But right now, this is your key level, which was 58,500, which we broke to the upside, validating the fact that this range is active and validating the fact that this can be the potential spring of this reaccumulation zone. But for that, we need one more signal. Now, what is that and why is that? Right now, even though you're breaking the trend line, you are consistently putting in lower highs, lower lows. We need to see that change, which means compared to the last time, you have more buyers with more buying power pushing the price to the upside. So if the price go above 63,000, that is a huge signal that the trend is changing and the trend is in favor of the macro trend. The micro trend is changing and it's now going back into the macro trend. So when the micro trend aligns with the macro trend, that's where the maximum ROI is. So if you do look at the Bitcoin dominant side of things, then the interesting part there becomes, like, are we getting a breakout? As of now, we are not. You're still forming that structure where you need a breakout. You're not breaking to the downside. You're not breaking to the upside, which is a bit confusing, which is a bit more, you know, uh, it's like watching the paint dry. You need a lot more patience there. The break to the downside is when all finds go ramping up. The break to the upside is when alts are going up, but slower than Bitcoin. Now you watch Ether. It is flirting with that trend line. Any break, there is going to be monumental. That means, instead of getting rejected to the downside and then coming back up, allowing Bitcoin to take on the dominance, also fighting back, or more money is 
now jumping into the alt market, expecting it to go much higher than Bitcoin. That's why more money is entering altcoins than Bitcoin. Now, on the Bitcoin front, we understood something. But if we move on to the altcoin side of things, then you take XRP as a whole. You look at the MACD, it's crossing to the upside on the three day. You look at the RSI, it's broken to the upside. Daily is good, it's positive, it's fine. You go on the weekly, you're getting this bullish weekly candle. Remember in yesterday's video and day before yesterday, we talked about this, the small pump coming in, what may happen and the possibility of this candle. Trouble is on the weekly, you didn't break the moving average and close the weekly candle. You stayed just below that. But for us to go hyper bullish on this asset, what we do want to see is this week, in the next seven days, price breaking above 0.54. However, with the current change or with the current bounce in the market, if we do look at the monthly chart for XRP, it is good. It is good. You came back to the moving average. You breached the moving average for a bit of time and then broke back above it, which is something we wanted to see. And the price action is now showing, yeah, the history, it's been true. I wanted to do this, but it took a long time. Last time it happened very short and I was like, most likely this is going to happen when? By May. It didn't. It's happening now in July. That's another two months. But it is what it is. The market is taking more time, but it is on the positive end. When you're watching all coins breaking through a trend line of resistance on a micro, and making a re-accumulation pattern which we saw in Bitcoin last time. That's important. Which we saw in Bitcoin and then Bitcoin went rallying another 150%. Let's get the math straight and look at what Bitcoin did just after confirming this bullish divergence. That was a hidden bullish divergence. That's close to 200% which Bitcoin did. Historically speaking, if Bitcoin is doing 200% after showing you something, all coins will do double that. Usually 2.5 times, but let's take two times, which in itself would argue that Ether can actually go and do 400% rally from its local bottom. Well, would be that number if Ether goes 400%. Now, first, let's look at what would be that number if Ether just follows Bitcoin's move. That's $8,000. That's a big number because it started at way. That's a 10x in Ether from its bottom of the market cycle. Now, what if it is 400%? That's $14,000 Ether. Think about the media, the attention from the retail and everyone else when the price is at $5,000, $8,000, $10,000 because realizing the fact that the masses are not here yet is the key to this game. Because when you're looking at the worldwide search of the past five years for Bitcoin, for crypto, for Ether, you see no one is here. The masses, the exit liquidity, it's not here yet. And usually when does that happen? When the price rise to the new peak and the whales want to sell this to retail, they put advertisements everywhere, the media and the paper, <laughs> printed media, social media, traditional media, everyone will be paid to bring in new people to buy from them so that they can exit at the top. As of now, they're not here. The masses are not here. The moment you see this going back up, that's the new season. 
where you should be thinking about taking profits. Each asset would be a little bit different here and there for sure. But as soon as they give you a negative divergence, wrap up. That's the easiest way to secure your profits without going greedy. Each leg up, we would have felt that. I should have taken profits here. I should have taken profits here. Right? I mean, at least I did feel that. But at the end of the day, if you are spot rider, your aim is to go for the macro. Your aim is to reach the macro level where it gives you the maximum ROI potential. So if Ether is about to run up like that, whether it's 8,000, whether it's 10,000, it doesn't matter. The upside matters. It goes to the upside. That's the direction. That matters a lot more. In that segment, which is the altcoin market, if Ether is running up, expect XRP, Cardano, XLM, and a lot of others which the market is saying, I like it now. I didn't care about it a long time back, but now I like these. Yes, it's not at the top with 50-60% run up for the week, but it is close to the highest tier, say 30%. You came close, you did 28% up, at the local peak it was 30 So XRP, XLM, Cardano, ICP, you have a lot of different tokens now starting to roll into that range where it's attracting capital. As more capital comes in with the liquidity, the price in the bottle rise. And if you'd like to stay on top of that kind of a move in the market, follow the scientific investor family using the link in the description below. Smash that like button for me if you haven't done that yet, guys. I'll meet you on the next video. Bye for now.